everyone. Welcome to Peach Discovery. I'm Katie, I'm the nutritionist for Peach Dish, and today we're talking turkey. That's right, it's a Thanksgiving special! Woo! Most historians agree that the first Thanksgiving was held in 1621 between the Pilgrims and the Wampanoag tribe in Plymouth Colony in Massachusetts. However, it wasn't made a national holiday until 1863, when a woman named Sarah Josephina Hale finally convinced President Lincoln, after 17 years of campaigning, to make it happen. Um, you may recognize her name because she was the woman who made up the song, Mary Had a Little Lamb. <laughs> Although a lot of us enjoy turkey as the centerpiece for our Thanksgiving dinner, uh, back at that first feast, it was probably something like deer or even eel, lobsters, clams, and other fish that were served. In fact, it wasn't until the 1800s that we enjoyed turkey for Thanksgiving. As for sides, it was probably pumpkins, but not pumpkin pie that was enjoyed. It was probably cranberries, but not cranberry sauce as it hadn't been invented yet. And there were probably no sweet potatoes because sweet potatoes weren't uh, brought to the Americas quite yet. And there were definitely no turduckins. In 1953, a fun thing happened where the company Swanson, somebody accidentally overordered frozen turkeys that year and it resulted in a surplus of 26 tons. Um, but that's cool, that's a lot of leftovers, we're all familiar with that, but it actually launched uh, TV dinners because they ended up uh, slicing it and packaging it with maybe some sauce and selling it that way. As for the actual bird, it's interesting to note that only male turkeys gobble. Um, they're known as jakes, whereas the females are jennies, and they make a sound that's more like a chirp or a cackle is what it can be described as. <laughs> <laughs> so you may have heard that turkey contains tryptophan um, and that tryptophan is what's responsible for making you tired after you eat your big feast on Thanksgiving. However, that's a myth. Tryptophan is an amino acid and it's a building block for some neurotransmitters like serotonin. Now serotonin can be converted into melatonin, which can induce some drowsiness. And like I said, turkey does contain uh, that tryptophan compound. Um, it can also be found in a lot of other things like eggs and milk and oatmeal and soybeans. In fact, ounce for ounce, if you had a serving of baked macaroni and cheese, it's gonna have more tryptophan than your turkey. So why do we get sleepy after that meal? Well, it's probably uh, just the amount of food we eat, so the overeating. Um, when your body encounters that much food and tries to digest it, it'll make you tired. It, it will expend calories and make you sleepy. Now a lot of the food is carbohydrate, your carbs, um, and when you ingest quite a lot of that, you get a sugar spike and then a sugar crash. Um, that'll, that'll put you out for a nap pretty easily. Lastly, um, if you're of age and you enjoy a couple of glasses of wine, uh, we all know that booze is a depressant and that'll help get you sleepy as well. When it comes to turkey, a lot of people are concerned with light meat, and dark meat. Which one should you choose? Which one is better for you? But first I'd like to explain uh, why there's light meat and also dark meat. You see, meat is muscle, animal protein muscle, and there's a red pigment, a compound called myoglobin, present in that muscle. And myoglobin's job is to deliver oxygen to muscle tissues. So depending on what part of the turkey you have, uh, there will be more myoglobin. So say you're eating a turkey leg, that's going to be darker meat because those muscles are a lot more active than the turkey breast. In terms of taste, a lot of people like the dark meat um, because they say it's a little bit more flavorful and juicier. Um, but in terms of nutrition, um, they're pretty comparable. Um, darker meat will have a little bit higher fat and calories. 
Um, but otherwise, it's going to make a bigger difference depending on your portion size, how you choose to prepare the turkey, and whether you enjoy it skin on or skin off. So I personally like to view Thanksgiving and the holidays as more of a nourish your soul type of uh, ordeal. However, if you are really concerned about going for the healthiest option when it comes to your turkey, I would go with a three ounce portion. So picture like a deck of cards, um, lean white meat, so your breast meat's a good choice, and then uh, no skin. And what's turkey without gravy? <laughs> Gravy is actually super easy to make. Um, after you cook your turkey, you probably got some drippings down in the pan. That's what you're gonna use to make your gravy. A pan gravy is really simple. It's those drippings plus flour and some water to thin it out, depending on how thin or thick you like your gravy. So like I said, you'll start with those drippings at the bottom of your pan. Um, if your drippings are a little bit dry, you can use a cup of water to loosen them up. Um, and then you're going to take a strainer and strain them out. So you'll take that and then you'll strain off any extra loose bits into a cup. After that, you're going to let that cup sit. Um, and you'll notice that all of the fat is going to rise to the top. There'll be a separation. Um, and then you'll take about two tablespoons off the top of that fat and put it in a pan. That's where all the flavor is. Once you pour off any of the remaining fat that you're not using right now, um, you'll want to reserve that liquid at the bottom. You'll use that later. Back to the pan with our lovely turkey fat drippings. Um, you'll put the pan over about medium high heat and then you'll add some flour. You'll slowly stir that all together over the course of about four or five minutes. Um, and what you'll see is that the mixture will start to turn a little bit brownish and get a nice uh, nutty aroma going. At that point, you're gonna to to take that cup of liquid that we saved before and add it in. Um, you'll stir and bring up the mixture to a simmer and uh, keep it there until you reach the thickness that you like. At this point, uh, you'll want to season with salt to pepper uh, to your taste. Um, and then if you want it a little bit thinner, then you can add in some additional water. It's totally up to you. Now that we've got our turkey and our gravy, we're ready to serve with our friends and family. And of course, you're going to want to serve both of those with your side dishes. Uh, some of our favorites are um, maybe some glazed sweet potatoes, uh, roasted root vegetables, creamed Brussels sprouts, um, some nice fluffy biscuits, and then uh, a dressing. If all of those sound good to you, uh, Peach Dish actually has a Thanksgiving bundle plant. So you can get all of that plus a turkey and of course what you need to make that gravy um, all delivered to your door um, in time for Thanksgiving. And that makes it super easy to prepare and then host for the holidays because there is no long lines at the grocery store, no extensive planning of your menu. Everything's there for you in the right portions, the right ingredients. Um, and of course, no uh, racing for the last turkey at the grocery store like you see in a lot of sitcoms and such. Now that you have enjoyed a wonderful feast of Thanksgiving with your friends and family, you're gonna have lots of leftovers. Um, and lots and lots of turkey. There's lots of things you can do with your leftover turkey. You could put it into soups or casseroles. Uh, you could put it into tacos or top your nachos with it. It's, it's pretty flexible. Um, we like to stick with the classic, uh, classic turkey sandwich. Um, and this is a very versatile recipe. So for ours, we're keeping it pretty basic. We'll have two slices of bread, toast it if you like. Um, then we also have our leftover turkey, of course. And then on one side, we're gonna put some good old mayonnaise. You know, we love ourselves some Duke's mayo. And then on the other, uh, maybe some cranberry sauce to stick with that, that Thanksgiving theme. You'll probably have some of that leftover too. Uh, you could, of course, add any other leftovers you happen to have on hand. So uh, add some mashed potatoes, add some dressing, uh, maybe some gravy. Go crazy, uh, whatever floats your boat. So that's all I got for this super fun Thanksgiving and turkey themed episode. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to check out that Thanksgiving holiday bundle that I mentioned before. Um, go to peachdish.com to learn more about it. The Thanksgiving kit will be available and live on the site 
a month before uh, the actual Thanksgiving. So be sure to check it out and find the bundle or kit that's right for you. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving, um, but that's all I got. Uh, peach out. I'm gonna go take a nap now. <laughs>